I don't know if it was the fine or if it was uh, Damian Lillard popping in the comments on his IG live. <laughs> or maybe he took a refresher course in chess and realized that if you ain't a king, a queen, a bishop, a knight, or a rook, that makes you a pawn. They, the pawns are useful. That's why they're on the board. I don't know what That's it was, right. but uh, Kyrie Irving uh, broke his brief media boycott uh, earlier today. Check it out. Come on, man. Y'all got to do better than that. <laughs> you got to tell me when we ain't got it. Like, the, the, the <laughs> 20 second time out. 20 second time out. I said the only thing I want off the top of the show is the Kyrie Irving sound. This is, That's all I said I wanted. This is, was the Kyrie Irving sound. This is serious. So, this so, is serious inside baseball. That's what I said I want. I said I want the Kyrie Irving sound off the top of the show. It's, we come in earlier. We come in early in the show. You're not there. See, that's what Kyrie talking about. You got to be there. Bam, I need you. I need you where I need you. Post up. I need you on the elbow. I need you. I, Kevin I need, Durant I'm running there. point, guys. I'm running point guard here. I need you in your spot. I need the ball where I want it. And I need you in your spot. We'll play the sound in a second, apparently. Okay. You hurry up. We'll play it in a second. Michael, he broke his silence. All right. He broke his he silence. Uh, your initial thoughts, I don't know if you've heard it. I've read it. He said it, the, the pawn thing was misunderstood. Uh, or yes. misconstrued, that he wasn't calling anybody pawns. Um, what did you think of the fact that Kyrie actually spoke to media, which we should hear momentarily? Okay, this is what I, I think about Kyrie. You remember at the beginning of the season, Mike, you said, the beginning of the football season, you said Cam Newton is the most fascinating person in the NFL for you. This was way back in September, right? Yeah. This is before they even yeah, played a game. Yeah. You just thought the, yeah. the idea of, of Cam Newton going to the Patriots and playing for Bill Belichick and how this was going to play out was fascinating to you. Kyrie Irving is that guy for me uh, in, in 2020, 2021. And I'll tell you more after we hear the sound because we got the sound right now. Boom. We do? Eureka. Oh, we saw, I thought we had that. You know. <laughs> Come on. Oh, you know, I thought, I, you know, I misunderstood it. But anyway, uh, he is that guy. He's that guy for me. This is this is this is the case of the Mondays. Are, is this the Mondays we're having here right now? Is that what we're doing? No, no, that's not right. Is that what we're doing? It's the case no, of the Mondays. But, okay. But I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you why he's he's that for me, because he is clearly trying to, and I and, and I don't think it's clear yet what what he's trying to do, but he's got a vision for his own career, Mike, and he's got a vision for his own storyline, his own narrative, and nobody outside of, I think, Kevin Durant truly understands what it is. And he is trying to make sure that happens. Like, everybody, some people are still confused why he left Cleveland. Okay, he's past that. Why he left Cleveland with LeBron. He didn't want to play with LeBron anymore. Came to Boston. He was excited about going to Boston. Then he didn't want to be there anymore either. So I just want to know what's going on. I want to, go, I want to know what's going on with Kyrie Irving because he sees something. He sees something that is is greater than anything that he's experienced in his career. I think that's the basketball side, and I'm also curious to see if he keeps he keeps capitalizing art. I'm not going to be a, a grammar geek and say stop capitalizing that, but he keeps capitalizing art when he sends when he sends out these statements of hey enjoy the art. This is about the love and peace. Enjoy the art of basketball. There's something basketball-wise that he's trying to accomplish, and I think he's trying to find something uh, away from the court, and I wonder if they will connect. You know, so uh, about five, uh, up until about 10 seconds ago, I was annoyed. Up until about 10 seconds ago, I was annoyed at the fact that we didn't turn around inside baseball, that we didn't turn around the Kyrie Irving sound from I don't know how long ago it was for the, for the beginning of the show. But actually, it's rather apropos. It's actually rather fitting. And the reason it's rather fitting is because I honestly don't care what he said. And I honestly, I honestly never cared even coming into today. I didn't care if he didn't talk to us. So it's actually kind yeah. of representative of my feelings on the matter. That wasn't scripted, but the more I thought about it, it's like, who cares what Kyrie Irving said? And who cares whether he talks to the media or not? I know fans don't care whether he talks to the media or not. I can tell I you that much. With, with, with a, with a I think fans do care. No, they don't. Because if they want to hear from him, they can log into his IG Live. Or they could follow, hold on, Gary. They could log into his IG Live, or they could, um, you know, follow him on Twitter or anything else. I mean, I know that fans have never been sympathetic toward us 
as members of the media. Right. Oh, I get that. So people are not cooperate. Right. That, that's basically what I'm getting and, at. But generally and sometimes speaking, I'm on their side. Sometimes I'm on their well, side. I, I, I get it. Sometimes. But, but even but even whether Kyrie Irving, you know, whether he looks at us as pawns. And by the way, I didn't take offense to it because, number one, hit dogs holler. I don't view myself as a pawn. I don't consider myself a pawn. But if that's how he looks at the media in general, all right, I guess there's probably something to be said for it because we're all part of a larger machine. You know what I mean? Sure. A lot of us ain't cashing our own checks, for that matter. We're not writing the checks. And so it didn't offend me, him referring to the media as pawns, no matter how much you try to take it back today. I, I, I know that's what he meant, but that's okay. To whom it may concern. If the shoe fits, wear it. <laughs> or if you're right. at the University of Florida, throw it. Might get to that later on. We'll see. Yeah. Anyway, um, and I think a lot of it has to do with uh, the Marshawn Lynch experience from a couple of years ago. Different people, um, but eccentric or, or eclectic, if you prefer, what have you. Uh, interesting personalities, different rationale. Uh, a friend of mine named David Shields, I highly recommend you watch this film. It's called uh, Lynch, A History. And it looks at um, Marshawn Lynch's media boycott a couple of years ago. Remember, you know, I'm just here so I won't get fined. Yeah. It looks at that a yeah. couple of years ago. Um, and it looks at it through the prism of not only Oakland's tradition of protests and revolution, but the larger uh, history of athlete protests. Um, and I, I looked at his boycott a little, a, a little more uh, deeply after watching David Shields' film. I, film, I highly recommend it. And I'm not suggesting that this is Kyrie Irving attempted to make some kind of political statement. I don't read it as that, even though he did quote Malcolm X. Uh, I just... I'm over, I'm over begging people to do something that they don't want to do. Because there's enough people in the locker room, there's enough people around the league. First of all, there are 8 million stories. And there's enough people around the league that are willing uh, to tell their stories, are willing to try to control and shape their own narratives, are willing to use the media or manipulate the media, as the case may be. Um, there are enough guys right. who get it, who get their responsibility. And responsibility is not always synonymous with burden but who get their responsibility and their obligation to help grow the game and promote the game, there's a plenty enough guys in that locker room and around the league that are more than willing to talk to the media where I ain't got to beg, beg for them to do it. Not to mention, is Kyrie Irving going to say something so profound that I got to hear it maybe. from him? He might. He might. He might. Okay, and, great. And this is why, great. And this is why I think, it. Put it on this is why I disagree with you. This is why I disagree with you. You say, Fans don't necessarily want to hear him talk because if they want to hear him, they can go to Instagram and Twitter. No, 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 no. Excuse well, me. No, no. That's, they don't want. They don't care if he talks to us or not. That's the because we're, because okay. remember we're the enemy. Long before Donald Trump, we were the we, we've order. always been the entity, the enemy. The the, the the fourth estate, the entity that is the media, the mainstream media has always been the enemy. So we get no sympathy from from the uh, no from NBA question. Fans. You know that. And, and Kyrie Irving should know he's not the first person to believe in uh, conspiracy theories and hate the media. Okay, he's not the first. And, we, and as you just pointed out, uh, there's a great example uh, of the our country right now. But this is where I disagree with you. After a game, after a playoff game, for example, they're, they're going to be in the playoffs. They're going to be a really good team. Uh, with Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving, they're going to be a really good team. After a playoff game, uh, where he scores 40 points, they win by a point, they lose by a point, he's involved in the play of the game. Yeah, you do want to hear those, those situations, the podium. You, you want it as, as a fan. Now, that's different than Kyrie Irving telling you about what's important to him away from basketball, uh, talking about music or movies or shoes or anything else or, or political, uh, uh, political endeavors. That's that's for Instagram and Twitter away from the game. But I do think fans want to hear, especially I think you're too close in the to moment. It. Uh, I think you're too close to it because it's not it's not as though we are the only. Oh, oh, oh I'm not. I'm not close to it at all. And, not and, anymore. And thank God. Thank God. Well, you say, fan, I, and, you and say listen, fans want to hear it. And, I'm, and, I, and I, I look at it from a fan perspective. You know, like when Kyrie Irving was in Boston, I wasn't covering the Celtics. I didn't need him to talk to me. I didn't need him to do my job, but I did enjoy hearing from him. I wanted to hear his analysis of something not, that I just yeah, watched. But you're not a you're That's not me. a fan, Michael. You you might be a fan at heart, but we, no, I mean, in a, in the truest <laughs> sense, okay? Like you, you you've been it. Both of us, and I, this is I'm not pointing the finger at you. Both of us been in this game too long. To consider ourselves fans, we, we fans, we can't just look at things through the the prism of an a, average fan who follows him on Instagram or follows him on Twitter 
or, 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 or follows whatever content that he puts out uh, independent of the mainstream media. You're, you're talking about, and set aside, you know, COVID and, and the Zoom press conferences yeah. nowadays. You're talking about back in the day when they'd be at the podium and you got the media, you know, gathering and somebody would ask a crazy question and, and, it, and it'd be a viral moment. Or somebody might ask a good question and it leads to a good answer. That process, let's just call it that process of, of working with the press is not something that I think fans are, are, are clamoring for. Yeah, it would be nice and it often leads to some great sound bites, but it's not... It, 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 more often than not, it leads to scrutiny of the media. Because more often than not, you got people saying, why would that such and such That's ask that question. crazy question? Or is somebody getting up yeah. walking off? You know, it's something. It's one of those moments. But rarely yeah, is it something easy. so insightful that it can't be relayed to his fans or his followers without a, a, a microphone with a flag from a major network across. And I think we'd be remiss, though. I think we'd be remiss if we just don't point out again, and I know a lot of people know this, but we got to point it out one more time. You talk about... Hey, you know, he doesn't want to do it, and I don't need to hear from him. I'll tell you who disagrees with you. Uh, let's start with Adam Silver and, and everybody no, in the right. uh, NBA apparatus because it's part of the job. It's part of the job for yes. players to speak. That's why he keeps getting fined. I have a, uh, something to say on that in a second. I get that. So, I, I, totally, I totally get so that. So whether, and, and, whether and we think... If he doesn't do it, it falls on somebody else to do it. It's, it's, right. it's in the contract for a reason. Don't get me wrong. I understand that. I understand that perspective. I just come from it from a different place, I guess, just at my, this point in my life and my career. I'm just not wanting to chase these dudes like that. You know, maybe it's because I don't have to do it anymore, but even when I had right. to do it, it's cool. That's it. I go, I go, I go find some, somebody else. Well, but it, but I've done it though. But I have done it. Yeah, I know. I you know, know what yeah. I mean. I used to do right. No, but I'm saying I used to do it. And Michael, even when I used to do it, I was never one to get all hot and bothered about the fact that somebody wasn't giving me access. But so I, I'm speaking from a privileged position. I understand the people that have to do it now may feel differently. And yes, you're right. It's in the contract for a reason. Adam Silver, you know, mandates it. The league mandates it. It's tradition. But here's the thing, man. And this goes for Kyrie Irving or anybody else. This game, this game will be here. He's going to come and go. They all come and go. The ones who want to yeah. talk to the media or don't talk to the media, they will be here longer than they will. Now, they'll have a whole lot more money, and more people will know them, but when he's done playing, this machine is oh, going to keep right. rolling. This, you know, and, and a lot of them that don't want to talk to the media end up wanting to be members of the media. Kyrie Irving probably or, not. Maybe. We'll or see. Or become members you of know? the media. Or, do, or actually become uh, yeah. members of the yeah. media. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, yeah. But, but, you know, I, I said I wanted to say something about Kyrie and his statement when he wasn't talking. And as I said, I understand. I, ha I do understand at times there are certain reporters that you don't like. There are certain storylines that you don't, you don't want to deal with. And at some point, you just take response. You, you, you take control of your story, which is... Uh, what Kyrie said he was doing, taking control of his own platform and then making the decision, hey, I'm not going to play your game. All right, I understand that. This is one thing, though, uh, and I'm, I'm going to take him at his word that he is more concerned about the vulnerabilities right now that are, that are happening to certain communities, including in Brooklyn, mm -hmm. where the unemployment rate is 16%. All right, 16% in Brooklyn, uh, and it's higher in other communities. I think the Bronx is, Bronx is like 30%. It's unbelievable. So when I say, if you want to take control of your story and you don't want to talk to the media, that's cool. But what you're doing is give, you're talking about vulnerable communities, unemployment off the charts. You want to do something to help. You are giving $25,000 to the NBA and allowing the NBA to do what it feels is responsible with that money. Yeah, it goes to NBA charities, but it's not your charities. And it's not your voice. It's not your impact. You control the dollars. So what I would say, if he wanted to keep it going all season, if he really wanted to do it, I'd say, all right, don't talk to the media all year. Release your statements every time. You're going to get fined uh, uh, $25,000. Uh, you direct where the money is going to go. Or you don't just give that money away. You say you use your media availability to talk about what's important to you. That happened well, in, in the bubble, did, didn't it? In the bubble, absolutely, yeah. That's exactly. They, they decided like, they were talking you about You would ask Brianna somebody Taylor. about a game. They were talking you about... You somebody about a game, and they say, absolutely. hey, Brianna Taylor, right. So yeah. I, I, if he's going to do it that way, 
I say just go all in. Go all in and do it and help somebody. Because 25, like, I know you can afford it, but... Yeah, it doesn't have to be either or. He could donate to NBA chari charities and do whatever he wants with, with the rest of his money. Mike, there are there are some people where $25,000 right now could change their lives. And so right. uh, th there's an there's a anti-poverty uh, organization uh, here in Boston. Uh, Doc Rivers does some work with it. Um, I, I, I contributed something um, a couple of weeks ago, and I was blown away by one of the stats that that the amount of people in Boston who are on the verge of, of foreclosing, of, of being evicted mm -hmm. because, because of COVID. So yeah, nationwide. That, that, that's, that's not a Boston story. That's not right. a Boston story. That's not a, that's not a story just in the state of Connecticut. That is all over. That's all over yeah. the country. It's in every NBA city. If you're going to be about it, just, just, but, I, I'd say I, take I more control. It's, it's, I, but it's a little absolute for me. I mean, I'm not. I don't think I misunderstand what you're saying. But okay, he could still give twenty five thousand dollars to NBA charity because at the time he didn't want to talk to the media and still give to so whatever give organizations that he wants. Because it's pocket change to him. Because it's pocket change to no, him. But, and if they, you know, it's pocket change to him. If, but well, no, exactly. That's my point. It's going to NBA charity. See, we're we getting we're getting too far off the deep end here. It's going. To no, no, NBA I'm charity. not. I'm not. I'm just. I'm. I'm not. I'm not trying to. I'm just going to say this. If if you are concerned, if your if your mission, if you're saying to the media, this is what he said to the media: stay focused, enjoy the art. We got bigger things to worry about right now, especially now in this time. That's what he said. That's his message. Uh -huh. You go back to his, uh -huh. his, his statement. That's it. I think I just summarized uh -huh. it. So if that's your message, even though you can afford to just throw away twenty five thousand dollars or give it to the NBA, which you're not really charity, crazy about yeah. the NBA because you don't like the NBA policies. Don't do that. Don't do that. Just come out. They're not mutually a, exclusive. They're not mutually exclusive. Are, he can still they don't have to be mutually exclusive. Wants. How do you know it's, that he's not? How do you know that he's I, not? I didn't doing say he's not. About? It's a, but that twenty-five grand is not going where he wants it to go. Is my point. That's all. It's not where he wants it to go because he's not in control of that. So if you're gonna just give away money, give away money in addition to the money that you're already giving away. I'm not saying he's not. But in addition to the money that you've already given away for good causes, take the extra 25 grand. NBA, uh, you're not, you're not going to hold that for me anymore. I'm going to sit here. I'll do what I need to do media-wise. But I'm not going to just throw away 25 grand when I know during this time somebody, somebody could use it and, and let NBA charities come up with uh, uh, fines from somebody else, not from me, for just because I don't want to talk to the media right now. Okay. Um, I didn't come into this show planning to talk about this, but he spoke today. Uh, I actually did want to talk about his art, capital A, uh, which we'll do after the break. But Gary, if you would be so kind. Uh, so as to make sure that we did not uh, misconstrue Kyrie Irving's words, uh, we should probably play his sound from today on the way out. So let's play the sound from today on the way out, go to break, and then we come back... Uh, with Kyrie Irving's art, because I do want to appreciate his art, capital A. I like the capitalization thing, Michael, what you talking about? The focus is on what's going on in the task here, you know, my job. And I wanted to make sure that that was clear. There are no distractions, nothing about dispelling anything, nothing about going back and forth, knowing about calling out one person or another, not even to refer to you guys as pawns, you know what I mean, or media. It's just really how I felt about the mistreatment of certain artists when we get to a certain platform of when we make decisions within our lives to have full control and ownership. You know, we we, we go through the rigorous season, we, we do everything we're asked to do, you know, and, and we want to perform in a secure and protected space. And if I can't have my voice protected on this platform where I, I offer myself and my art, just inviting everyone to it because this is what I've been blessed to do. I've been blessed to do. You know, I didn't, I didn't make it from the best circumstances, I made it because my family had a foundation and taught me the right things and how to live a principle-led life. So having that in basketball and my art, you know, it's just finding a balance, you know, and, and that's all. So to answer your to, to answer your first question, um, can you ask that, again, ask that one again? Hey, thanks for watching Brother From Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern time on Peacock. Appreciate you.